Wayne said it, before the Oaks that the reason this filly was nominated for the Triple Crown was not for the Derby, but to have the option after the Oaks of the Preakness. So, uh, that is true. We we did discuss that. Um, we discussed that before the Martha Washington uh, stake, after her allowance win at Hot Springs. Uh, but there's still, there's no firm decisions. It looks like she came out of the Oaks well. Um, she seems pretty happy right now, but it's still only two weeks till the Preakness and we don't want to push her too hard. We're just going to have to see how that decision plays itself out, you know, over the next few days. In play, but no decision. Um, I would say in play, but no definite decision. Wayne and I'll get together and, and we'll talk about it and, and see what the filly tells us she wants to do. But, um, you know, I, I, she's done enough. I mean, uh, she she's less than 24 hours since her win in the Kentucky Oaks. And right now I think she's done enough and we'll just kind of play it by ear and talk to her and see how it goes from there. Uh, Wayne said he would also want to see what happens in the Derby this afternoon, see how the race shapes up, and that that could be a, a component. But the main thing is talking yeah, to you and you seeing how the field is doing. You want to always see what your competition looks like. But right now, I'm thinking the Arkansas horses are looking pretty good, it seems like. If Cyberknife wins. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Barber Road gets the board. Yes, maybe so. Uh, just put in perspective what it was like yesterday and seeing her come down the stretch and the events. I mean, in the uh, where are we just at? 12 for hours. a small time farm and breeding operation, you know, it's, it's like it's just it's kind of a dream come true. Um, but seeing her come down the stretch, I, I just couldn't I, I get the finish line there soon enough. I said, Where is that finish line? <laughs> when is this going to be over? because it looked like Nest was coming on strong once she put away Echo Zulu. And, um, and it still is hard to believe. It still hasn't sunk in totally. But I've watched the replay now five times and it looks like we've won every time. <laughs> you know, that field going in, you know, we were saying there's gonna be some really nice fillies get beat in there. And obviously that happened. I mean, that was one of the deepest, I think, for like really quality field, fields that I, the Oaks has had in a while. I mean. It always has a nice well, field, but... I think it was a very deep um, field, and I, you have to fact check the numbers, but of the 14 starters, uh, I think they had 15 or so graded stakes wins among them. Three of them were undefeated in their lifetime, and 27 or 28 graded stakes placings among those horses, uh, and then the two-year-old champion. Uh, so I think it was a deep field. And uh, I can't, I can't recall one deeper. And maybe they're not, they're, they're never has been one deeper. I don't know the answer to that. Wayne has not forgotten how to train a horse. And he keeps saying how he did this for us. But I just, I couldn't have been happier seeing the photographs of his reaction when Secret Road crossed the finish line. So he, he likes to downplay his role in it, but I'm really happy for him what he's done and I think uh, he has not forgotten how to train a horse. It's no accident when you look at the people, the other trainers, Hall of Fame trainers that have come out of his barn. When you look at Dallas Stewart, Mike Maker, and Kieran McLaughlin, and Todd Pletcher, it goes on, Randy Bradshaw, and I think Brad Cox now is a great trainer. He came from Dallas Stewart. And Michael McCarthy and Michael was McCarthy the, an assistant Todd to Fletcher. Todd, yeah. So this, these things are not accidents. They learned something along the way. Well, it's a, it just it was very great, and it, it's a great story. And how many how many mares do y'all have? We have really four active mares and two or three retired retired mares that are just kind of eating grass and living out on the farm. And then some old retired racehorses. So. The the odds when you only, like you said, you don't buy outside horses. You I just... haven't bought a broodmare in twenty more than twenty years because we kind of breed and we sell some, keep some. Tend we tend to keep the fillies and, uh, and then tend to sell the colts, but 
it just depends year to year, you know, the market and you know, decisions like that. In, in such a numbers game, though, to it, it, it gives everybody hope that, yeah, the odds might still be stacked against you because it is a numbers game, but it can happen. It can happen. It can happen.